Yes, sir, we can. We are live, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, orientation session. Uh, so before I start, uh, I uh, uh, would like to introduce the program coordinators, Professor uh, Bobby George and Professor Aniruddhan, uh, who are the program coordinators for BS in Electronic Systems. Uh, they will uh, welcome you and uh, have a brief introduction and post which I'll be talking mainly about the program and the various aspects of the program. Uh, welcome, Professor, and you can start. Uh, thank you, Girish. So my name is Sani Rudhan. I am a faculty member in the Electrical Engineering Department at IIT Metras, and I'm one of the coordinators for this BS in Electronic Systems program. I'm uh, Bobby George. I'm also from the same department, Department of Electrical, Electrical Engineering. So welcome to the family of uh, BS Electronic System from uh, IIT Metras. So all of you have <clears throat> come in through the JE route. So uh, you don't have a, any separate qualifier process. So you will be starting your studies uh, in this program in September. So we thought before we get into maybe answering some of the questions and giving you a little bit, Girish will talk a little bit about the, about the structure of the program. What we'll do is we'll tell you a little bit um, about the background, about what electronics is, and so on, as well as maybe a little bit about how uh, about the structure of the program as well. So, of course, many of you might know that many, many decades ago, you know, of course, electronics is actually a, quite an old subject. But what we mean by electronics today is solid state electronics. So basically, um, <clears throat> things that use devices such as diodes and transistors. So basically, semiconductors are an integral part of uh, today's electronics. And uh, you know these types of electronics devices are pretty much used in every field, right? Not just in electrical engineering, not just in engineering, not just in science and engineering, but pretty much every field. So even if you take <clears throat> you know some other field, you do you will find that people will be using electronics in some means or the other. And pretty much uh, you know even in the field of electronics, uh, for example. There are broad areas such as uh, control systems, right? Uh, measurement of uh, different mechanical, uh, you know, quantities. Uh, in these situations, you will find other engineers using electronics as well, and uh, you will learn more about electronics, specific details about electronics. But uh, maybe uh, that I hope that gives you some idea. Right, maybe for the body, yeah, so and it's electronics yeah. at the same time, uh, we also know there is a lot of software involved in the modern Absolutely. electronics, so you will learn those aspects also. Correct. So, this program is actually quite unique in that way. So, <clears throat> many of you might have heard of the India Semiconductor Mission. You know that there is a big push in India for manufacturing, uh, you know, electronics in uh, an indigenous manner. So and there is a lot of investment from the government, a lot of involvement from local industry, a lot of involvement from uh, you know industry from outside India as well. So these are all coming together. Over the next few years, there is going to be an explosion in the number of jobs related to electronics. And that is one of the main reasons why uh, IIT Madras has started this electronic systems at this time. So in that sense, it is unique. In another sense, uh, it is unique because, as I told you, solid state electronics is about you know 70 years old. But uh, it has become so complicated today that a lot of electronic systems are actually running their own software. So I am taking off from where Professor Bobby pointed out one unique aspect of yes, this. Yeah. Right? So a lot of electronic systems run their own software. Right? You take a phone, it runs Android. You take a computer, it runs Windows, Linux mac os and so on you take <clears throat> you know any complex electronic system it will have its own software that will control how it behaves and there are of course a lot of jobs in this field and also it is important to understand this right it is important to understand both hardware and software and how they work together and that is one unique aspect in this program 
that you will not find in other, you know, EC, triple E type of degrees or instrumentation type of degrees because that is a little bit more unique. Yes. And just to add this uh, curriculum, we have prepared, you know, with the help of uh, experts from the industry. So we had consulted them. They were part of this uh, team. And this is specifically, uh, you know, uh, design curriculum, taking it to the feedback from them. Uh, just one more, I mean, uh, maybe in short, uh, you are going to have, I mean, uh, have a uh, you know, significant role in India's future, you know, electronic industry growth. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. So welcome, in short, welcome to IIT Madras. Yes. Uh, thank you, professors. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, is my screen visible? Uh, is, okay. Okay. So uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, let me uh, uh, go through uh, some of the various uh, uh, aspects of the program. I have uh, certain slides. Uh, I'll go through one by one. Uh, so uh, the first is uh, the program structure itself. So uh, as you're already aware, so we have three levels. One is foundation level, diploma level, and degree level. So, so we have two modes of entry. One is regular entry and JEE-based entry. Uh, all of you are from JEE entry. You do not have any qualifier exam to take. You will get direct admission to the program where you will be starting with the foundation level courses. So we have uh, a certain number of courses at the foundation level. Uh, once you complete that, you can exit with uh, the certificate uh, in foundation um, uh, and uh, that will be from IT, uh, IITM CODE. So CODE is uh, Center for Outreach and Digital Education. So the next level is the diploma level courses. So uh, once you complete the foundation level, you can move to the uh, diploma level. Uh, you have, again, you have some uh, 10 to 12 courses. The successful completion of that will lead to the diploma certificate from IIT Madras. Then the last level is the BS degree level. So this is where you will learn advanced subjects. Uh, you will have uh, various uh, various courses related to the advanced uh, electronics, and uh, you will ha you have around twelve courses plus an optional apprenticeship. Uh, once you complete that, you can uh, you will get the BS degree in uh, electronic systems. So. Three, two to three important points that you should note here is there will be a uh, uh, there will be lab sessions which will be conducted at IIT Madras campus. That's an integral part of the program, and uh, the in there will be quizzes and exams which are in person. So while the content is delivered online, the uh, quizzes and exams will be in person at designated exam center. You have to go to the nearest exam city and exam center and you have to attend in person. And uh, as you are already aware, the entry is for anyone who has completed class 12 with physics and mathematics. So this is the overall structure of the program. Uh, let me move forward. So Girish, just one minute, maybe wherever possible, I'll try to add a little bit supplement uh, the information. Can you no. just go back to the previous slide? Uh, I think a lot of students might have questions about the labs. So maybe I'll just, uh, we'll just address it a little bit here. So um, the structure of the lectures is such that, uh, you know, they are pre-recorded lectures and you'll be studying them. So similarly, um, you know, I think one of the things which Professor Bobby pointed out during the introductory session is that there is a software component and a hardware component and they have to work together. Now, uh, Every course that you do in the first few courses uh, related to electronics will most likely have some kind of practical component. In a software course, that practical component will be in the form of programming. In a hardware course where you will be building something, it will be uh, you know building some electronic circuit or electrical circuit, understanding how it works. And man, very often you'll be building these to perform a certain function or to uh, understand how it works because it will be used in a more complicated system. Some of this, so there will be a lab kit that will be given to you when you are ready, uh, when you are taking 
a particular course in the next semester. So let us say in a particular semester, you are uh, going to be taking a course that has a hardware lab component. The previous term, you will, you know, we will invite you to IIT Madras when you, you know, and have a session orient, a special orientation session for that particular lab kit. And we will tell you a little bit about how it works and demonstrate it to you. You can try it out yourself at that time. If then you will in fact one or two experiments uh, they will do here. Exactly. So a couple of the experiments you will be doing it, you know, under our guidance. And then you will take that lab kit with you back home <clears throat> for the next talk. And throughout the term, you know, you will be able to experiment with the lab kit. So we will put out all the videos, documentation that is required to give you very close guidance on how to build simple electronic electrical circuits using the lab kit. And then eventually, uh, you know, uh, once you are very comfortable with that lab kit, you will be, you know, uh, building more complicated things. And that will happen um, in at the end of the term in, let us say, in summer, you know, term, you know, in summer break and winter break, you will be coming here for uh, one to two weeks and building the more complicated things under our guidance. Do you have anything to specific? Yeah, so in between, uh, you know, if they have some difficulty, uh, you know, you will be sharing your screen with us. Yes. And then, you know, we'll be supporting how to, uh, you know, troubleshoot and so on. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, moving forward. So, uh, so this is a, a very new program uh, that we uh, have launched. So we launched this program uh, in the month of March, uh, 6th March to be precise. The applications were open from 22nd March and the last date to apply was 25th June. Uh, till now, uh, around uh, 6,000, uh, around 7,000 people uh, have applied for this program and number of candidates who have actually applied and completed the application is 1,789. So, uh, and we have a large number of candidates who did not complete, they, uh, you know, they started the application and the midway they stopped and uh, many of them have not completed. Uh, some important points about the program, as I already mentioned, this is a program meant for anyone who has completed class 12 with physics and mathematics. There is no limitation on the number of seats. There is no uh, limitation. Uh, there's no limit when it comes to age. Um, uh, candidates with any age can apply and join this program. Coming to the content part, as I already mentioned, the content is delivered online, but the quizzes, the final exams uh, are conducted at designated exam centers uh, and you have to go there and it will be a proctored exam. So the medium of instruction will be in English uh, for this particular program. So uh, I'll let maybe I'll just add one clarification because students may not know what a quiz is. In IIT Madras uh, language, a quiz is basically a monthly test. Right, so every few weeks you will have an uh, you will have a shorter test. The final exam will happen at the end of the semester. So typically we will have in a in a term you will probably have maybe two to three quizzes and an end semester and a final exam. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So uh, the next uh, uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk is a little bit about the demography of the applicants. You can see how diverse the applicants are uh, when it comes to whether it is category or the role or the age or gender. Uh, we, we can see that uh, we have candidates from uh, diverse age groups. Uh, we have 1,000 plus, candid uh, plus candidates who are between 15 to 20 uh, age. and But we also have a few uh, candidates uh, who have uh, crossed 50. So we have some 17 uh, you know, candidates who have uh, who are between 51 to 60 and we have four candidates who are between 61 to 80. So this is a very diverse uh, group of applicants that we have. And also when it comes to role, you can see that uh, many of the applicants are uh, either in their class 12 or have completed class 12. And uh, uh, we also have a large number of uh, candidates who are currently working. Around 214 uh, candidates are currently employed. Um, so that's about the uh, demography of the applicants. Uh, State-wise, uh, you can see that uh, we have applicants from uh, 
across the country uh, we have large number of representation from bihar karnataka uh, uh, maharashtra tamil nadu uh, uttar pradesh and uh, telangana uh, of course we also have representation from other states as well uh, but the numbers are uh, you know different so i also want to talk little bit about the uh, the data science program which we launched uh, two two and a half years back uh, in 2021 we started this program uh, just to give you a gist of the program or the overview of the program uh, so from jan 2021 to april 2023 the number of applications that we received for the bs data science is 1 lakh uh, out of that uh, around 28% have actually qualified uh, to join the program and out of that 83% that is around 25482 students have started the program currently around 17584 students are active uh, as you can see uh, this data science program also has three levels foundation diploma and uh, degree level where uh, we have 11000 uh, plus 5000 plus and uh, 271 students respectively uh, in these uh, levels Uh, for the current june 2023 qualifier the number of students who applied is 22000 plus so i just wanted to give you a gist of the other program that we started uh, two and a half three years back uh, moving on uh, let me talk a little bit about the courses processes and uh, and the uh, important dates so uh, as you can uh, see here on the slide uh, for each of these level there are certain number of credits that you have to complete for foundation level it is 44 credits for diploma level it is 42 credits and for the degree level we have 56 credits so in order to get earn these certificates you have to earn the uh, these many credits for example 44 you have to get 44 credits to complete foundation and get the certificate you have to uh, get 86 credits totally that is 44 plus 42 in order to get diploma certificate and in order to get degree certificate you have to earn the to uh, the total number of credits which is 142 coming to the courses we have 9 plus 1 lab course in the foundation level uh, we have 8 uh, courses plus 2 lab courses at the diploma level and we have 12 courses plus 1 additional uh, uh, optional apprenticeship which we'll be talking about later uh, as we uh, progress in the program so uh, I yes. just add a little bit because okay. the students may not know what a credit is. So okay. maybe we just explain very briefly what the credit system means. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> lot of universities, uh, especially of higher uh, you know education, follow something called a credit system. So the idea is that um, the um, the degree is broken up not into courses necessarily but into something called credits uh, basically there is an overall uh, expectation that you must have studied for so many hours over a period of let's say four years in this case and that is broken down nominally into courses but each course can be of different lengths they can you know because depending on the complexity depending on on the amount of on the type of skills that is required some courses may require lab skills some courses may require theory programming etc so they are broken up into various number of credits each credit typically uh, maps directly into one hour of uh, direct interaction with a teacher or an instructor so in other words if you have a course that is a three credit course normally you expect that you will have three hours of interaction with the professor that is or or the instructor that is the expectation and in fact many courses at the undergraduate level are typically three credits or four credits if you have a lab component they may be a little bit larger so many programming courses you know you may have lectures and some programming labs in which case they can be a little bit higher and sometimes if you have a guided uh, you know assignment so we also have assignments in iit at madras they are called tutorials in very uh, you know in many higher education colleges universities they are called tutorials because it is a guided solving of problems and uh, that will also add on to the number of credits of the course uh, thank you uh, so let me move to the next slide okay so a little bit about the je based entry um, all of you have 
and uh, uh, attempted uh, applied for this program through the JE uh, mode of entry. So the candidates um, uh, who are eligible for JE Advanced 2023 can get direct admission to this program and start the program. And uh, JE students will not have qualifier. So they'll have something called Quiz One, which is part of the foundation level courses. And since uh, you uh, have already got admission, you are not going to uh, take up the qualifier week or the qualifier process, which is going to start this uh, Friday onward. This Friday, we are starting week one uh, of the qualifier process, and that does not apply to you uh, since you have got direct admission and you will be directly starting the program in September. So I'll be talking about the dates of uh, September when we are going to uh, start the program in the later slides. But this is the uh, JE based entry uh, uh, that I wanted to uh, stress on. Um, as you can see, the application, the last date was 25th June. The course registration uh, for all of you will be on September 18th and 19th, 19th where you will be uh, able to select the courses, pay for the, those courses and start the term. The term starts on 22nd September. And one thing that you have to note here is you can choose the number of courses. Uh, you can choose up to four courses in a term, uh, but you also have the flexibility to choose the less number of courses. So uh, for example, you can uh, take only two courses and pay the fees only for those two courses. However, the maximum number of courses that you can take in a term is uh, four. So that is about the course registration and uh, the uh, starting of the term. Uh, the fees, uh, this is anyway, uh, which is provided uh, in the website also. Uh, for the foundation level, the total fees is uh, 80,000. Uh, for the diploma, it's, uh, 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 the total fees, which includes foundation, uh, the, it is 248,000. And for the BS degree level, uh, the, for the total fees is 584,000. We also have certain fee waiver, that is 50% fee waiver and 75% fee waiver based on the category and the family income. So uh, you can check that in the website. Uh, it is clearly provided. If you have any queries, we are uh, happy to answer. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the courses at the foundation level. In foundation level, we have uh, uh, nine courses plus one lab uh, course. So uh, in the first term, you have English one, mathematics for electronics one, electronic system thinking and circuits and introduction to C programming. Once you complete this, uh, you can take up the next one, which is uh, the, the, the courses are English two, introduction to the Linux shell, uh, basic digital system, electrical and electronic circuits, ele uh, electronics lab and embedded C program. These are the courses that you have for the foundation level. So only if you complete all these courses, you will be eligible to get the foundation level certificate. So moving on, uh, important dates, for JE based uh, candidates, the course registration window is, uh, is on 18th and 19th and the week one starts on 22nd September. There will be uh, two quizzes. Uh, that is first one is on 29th October and second one is on 3rd December. You will uh, also have lab work as uh, mentioned by professor. The end term exam will be on 24th December and the publishing of results of the end term will be on 3rd January 2024. Please uh, uh, understand this, uh, that you will not be starting week one now. I'm stressing uh, once again, this the week one that we are starting now on Friday is only for the qualifier students. So uh, some more important uh, points. So every term you will have videos that will be released every week. There will be graded assessment uh, assignment every week for each course and you will have live sessions from the instructors. We have instructors for every course. Uh, so they will be assisting you uh, in answering your queries, uh, clarifying your doubts and uh, uh, taking the live sessions. We also have something called discussion forum where you can ask whatever queries you have with related to content or with related to uh, you know, admin or so on and uh, you will get answer quickly in the discussion forum. So uh, we, we have something called discourse where uh, you will be able to ask your questions and interact with uh, uh, fellow learners. So this is a snapshot of the uh, how the portal uh, look like. Uh, 
uh, and how the course looks like. As you can see, on the left hand side, we have uh, uh, the menu item that is the weekly week wise content. Uh, uh, and 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 under each week, you will have quizzes, videos, uh, activity based questions, and uh, graded assessment. You have to click on each of this to view the content. For example, you can see that here the you know, L1.1 lecture is clicked and you can see that uh, the video is shown on the body of the uh, course portal here. In, uh, in the same uh, uh, portal, you can see there are certain menu items on top that is course, scores, announcements and forum. So let me uh, go through each of these uh, announcement is where you will be able to see the major updates from our side with respect to the course. For example, it can be related to the live sessions, uh, it can be related to the assessment deadlines, or it can be related to some other expert lectures that uh, we'll be posting. All these you can see in the announcement page. And uh, we recommend that you see this announcement page every day, uh, at least once or twice uh, so that you don't miss out on the important updates. So that is about the announcement part. Uh, discussion uh, forum, uh, as I already mentioned, you will have an opportunity to ask your questions in the discussion forum. This, uh, this particular uh, discussion forum is mainly about the Google uh, groups, which is mainly meant for the uh, qualifiers. But once you join the program, you will have something called discourse. So where you will get an uh, get uh, 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 the facility to ask your questions and uh, interact with uh, uh, fellow learners. The other tab that we have is scores tab. This is where you will be able to see the points that you have scored and whether uh, whether you have submitted or not, and whether uh, whether uh, when is the due date for each of the assignments. All these you will be able to see here. For example, the first one, the blue. Uh, colored mark that you can that you see here is the is the assignment that you have completed and it also shows the points that you have scored the red ones are those where you have not submitted and in case uh, the due date has not passed and if it is uh, if it is pending the submission is pending that you can see uh, as a orange uh, uh, in the, it will be indicated in the orange uh, color so this you can see in every course and uh, it's important that you uh, note down these uh, uh, these uh, deadlines of course there will be a calendar which i'm going to talk uh, later uh, we will be uh, through calendar you will get notification about the assignment deadline and so on but it is highly recommended that you that you don't wait for the last minute please complete the assignments well in advance so that there is no last minute rush. Uh, this is the calendar that I was talking about, uh, where uh, you know, we will be providing all these, all the deadlines, activity, uh, and, uh, and so on. And you can add it onto your calendar so that you will get notification uh, and you will be able to complete the assignments or attempt uh, uh, any live, uh, attend the live sessions and so on. Uh, please add uh, add this calendar to your uh, calendar uh, so that you get the notification on time. So uh, just uh, because you talked about the assignments, Girish, I'll just add one more point. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so the grade for every course will have a certain breakup between assignments, uh, quizzes, which are the monthly tests, and the final exam. That will be announced to you before the course starts. So it is important that you solve and submit as many assignments as possible because this will affect your grade at the end of the uh, term. Uh, so that is an important point to remember. So because the it can make a difference because uh, in IIT Madras, we follow something called a grade point average system. It is not a percentage system. And normally the grade point average system, basically uh, there are windows of marks which get translated into a letter grade. So, uh, for example, <clears throat> if you are right at the border, it can make a big difference. That is why assignments can make a big difference because if you are right at the border between two grades, it can move you from one grade to the other. So it is important to be as regular as possible and do well in assignments, quizzes, uh, final exam projects, 
uh, you know, labs, everything, right? Not just one of them. And uh, in general, assignment helps to learn things in, you know, uh, with more understanding and final exam also, it will help. Absolutely. Yes. So yes. what you will find is that the material that you cover in the assignments will help you a lot with understanding the material in an applied form and then do well in the quizzes and end semester. Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, so uh, some important points about the content uh, in every course, uh, as I already mentioned, there will be uh, videos by faculty uh, every course and every week. Uh, it will be around three hours uh, every week. Uh, and for every video, you will have something called activity questions. These activity questions will help you uh, understand. It's like it's more like a self uh, understanding. So uh, please attempt these activity based questions, which will you know, in uh, which will help you in completing the other assignments and also help you in uh, completing. It will also help you in understanding the concepts better. The next is something. Uh, next we have something called practice assignments. The practice assignments is is for the entire week. Whereas activities quest questions is based on the every video practice assignments is based on the entire week's content. So this practice assignments includes questions. We will provide uh, the PDS solutions and uh, video solutions also. This will not be graded, but this is more for you to practice the uh, no problems or any other uh, points that is mentioned uh, as part of the content and um, that will help you in understanding the concepts better. Uh, next we have is the graded assign ass assignments. Graded assignments are very, very important. Uh, it will be considered for the final scoring. Uh, the solution for the graded ass ass assignment will be provided after the due date. So once you submit the assignment, immediately you will not be able to see the solution. You will be able to see the solution for the graded assessment only after the due date. We also have uh, other important uh, content. For example, we have uh, uh, tutorial videos, we have text transcripts, uh, notes, uh, and reference books, and so on. Reference books uh, uh, is something that we provide. However, uh, we uh, do not recommend that uh, now for all the courses because the content might be very heavy in that. Uh, you may use it as just as a reference. However, if you definitely have a lot of time, we, uh, you know, you can definitely go through the reference books. Otherwise, the content that we provide as part of the course is sufficient to attempt the um, assignments and the interim exam. You will also have a mock test before the qualifier exam. Of course, this is meant for the qualifiers students. This is not meant for you. Uh, and we have discussion forum and, li uh, and live session to aid in learning. So this we already discussed. So uh, these live sessions will be taken by the instructors and uh, you can uh, ask whatever questions you have. Sometimes there will be a session on a particular topic um, if it is slightly uh, complicated. So we'll see what are the kinds of live sessions uh, uh, now. So there are four types of live sessions that we have. One is based on activity questions. One is based on the practice assignment, which will be uh, you know, solved by the instructor. Uh, we also have a live session uh, you know, to solve the graded assessment. And we also have live session, uh, which is kind of an open session where you can ask the question about the respective uh, weekly content and uh, other uh, learning materials such as activity questions and practice assignments and so on. So these are the four types of live sessions that we conduct for every course of this particular program. So some of the suggestions and tips that we want to give to uh, prepare well, that is first is please go through each and every video and please make your own notes. Uh, and this is very important because that notes will kind of help you uh, in understanding uh, in your own way and it helps in uh, you know summarizing the uh, you know, the entire uh, content and we highly recommend that you attempt each and every assignment on your own do not copy from others of course you can take the help of your you know, friends and other uh, peer learners but we do not suggest uh, and we don't recommend that uh, you, uh, you know, we, we highly recommend that you do it on your own. Uh, and then 
there are certain websites which uh, you know which states that they are, uh, they have solution for the graded assessments or the practice assessments and so on uh, we highly recommend that you do not go through such website these are not our iit madras official websites uh, please stay away from such websites they might or they might not provide solutions uh, that we are not uh, that we don't know but please avoid resorting to these okay because this is not going to help in learning this will probably help you to get some marks if at all if they are providing the right answers it might get to some marks but definitely it will be an hindrance uh, when it comes to learning so please avoid uh, you know checking such websites next is uh, follow the doubts that is asked in the discussion forum by other learners because some of your questions might be answered by the instructors and the faculty which are asked by other learners so uh, you, your questions might already get answered so please follow those questions uh, which are asked in the discussion forum and uh, to stress once again uh, attempt the practice assessments this will really really help you in the uh, taking up the graded assessment at the end term exam so this is a pathway that we have for the foundation level uh, so as we have different category of learners uh, everyone probably wants to take the course at their own level uh, this is just a suggestion uh, this is not something that you will have to uh, take one of these it is completely up to you as i already mentioned you can take up to four courses in a term uh, uh, for bsc in electronic system uh, we have two terms uh, every year uh, unlike bsc in data science where we have three terms every year and uh you have uh, we are providing three pathways that is comfortable uh, path medium pace and the fastest uh, path so the comfortable path is for those students who are doing another program or another degree in a different college and they might want to balance the college degree and this particular program so in such cases what you can do is you can take up two courses in a term uh, and then complete so that uh it will not be a very stressful thing for you and you will be able to uh, comfortably and successfully complete uh, the courses of bs program the medium pace is uh, uh, can be taken by anyone uh, if they have sufficiently slightly uh, sufficiently more time compared to the uh, students who are doing a uh, bs uh, degree uh, sorry who are doing a btech degree or another degree somewhere else so here is where we suggest that you can take up to uh, up to three courses in a term and complete the next set of courses in the subsequent uh, terms the fastest pace is for those uh, students who are taking this bs program in a full time mode uh, where you have lot of time uh, you can spend sufficient uh, time every day you can spend about 6 to 8 hours and uh, complete uh, you, you can take up four courses every term and uh, and complete uh, the uh, the program so this is just as i mentioned these are just a pathway or this is just a suggest suggested pathway uh, uh, this is just to summarize the pathway uh, the comfortable path that is you no know, you 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 can study for 20 hours per week and take up this path uh, uh, in that uh, it means to say that you have to study at least 2 hours per uh, every day and uh, in the weekend you will have to spend slightly more that is 10 hours if you are taking a, a medium pace then you will have to study at least 30 hours per week that is 3 hours on a weekday and on monday uh, on weekend you have to spend at least 15 hours and if you are a full time student of this particular program uh, you can uh, you know you have to study at least 40 hours per week uh, that is 5 hours every day and around 15 hours on a Uh, on a weekend so these are uh, these are the pathways that we have uh, that we are suggesting uh, in addition to the the academic part we also have a uh, student life uh, we have something called paradox this is an event which we generally conduct uh, in the month of may uh, where all uh, and in addition to paradox we uh, we group the students into houses so all students in the program will be divided into houses uh, and we also have other categories such as uh, groups clubs and so on uh, e each group that is the members from the same city uh, or neighboring city will be part of the each group and every group will have a group leader and every house will have uh, various uh, you know uh, 
designations such as uh, secretary, deputy secretary, uh, web admin, and so on. The the main idea is to uh, you know the nurture the organizational skill uh, through houses and group activities. We have various clubs, for example, music club, uh, dance club, uh, literature uh, club, and so on. You can be part of this, and uh, you can uh, 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 you can enjoy the student life uh, at, uh, uh, through this particular program. Uh, we have student support at various level. Uh, we have at the program level and also at the course level. Uh, I already explained about the course level. We have instructors who will be uh, answering your uh, queries, who will be taking live sessions and so on. Uh, at a program level also, we have administrative support uh, that we provide in case if you have any questions related to uh, administration uh, or payments or exam centers and so on, you can write to us. It is support hyphen es at the rate study.iatm.ac.in. Uh, we provide the financial support. Uh, uh, as I already mentioned, we have fee waiver for socially, economically, and physically disadvantaged uh, students. In addition to that, through various CSR activities, we provide the scholarships. And in case if you have some questions related to student affairs or wellness or something related to mental health, you can definitely reach out to us. Uh, we'll be definitely happy to answer your questions. Please write to us. The email ID is students uh, uh, high, uh, underscore affairs at the rate study.iatm.ac.in. Uh, so these are the uh, learner support services that we provide. And uh, coming to the dashboard, uh, uh, this is the uh, snapshot of the dashboard. This is at a program level. As you can see, there's something called announcement. The announcement, what I talked uh, a while ago was announcement related to a particular course. But this announcement is mainly about the program. Okay, the overall program, if there are any updates or any announcement, this will be mentioned in this dashboard. You can also see on the left hand side the various other aspects of the dashboard that is, uh, exam cities, the hall tickets are uh, mentioned here. The what are the current courses that you can access from here? The calendar you can access. You can access certain documents to download. And um, if there are any pending payments, all that you can see in this dashboard. Uh, so now uh, comes something very important when it comes to the uh, academic part. Uh, uh, please ensure that uh, you do not indulge in any mal practices. This will be taken very, very seriously at IIT Madras. Uh, there will be punishment of uh, those who indulge in academic mal practices. The examples of such mal practices include uh, unfair communication, uh, no use of uh, devices uh, when, when it is not allowed, plagiarism, forging documents, all these will be dealt very seriously at IIT Madras. The punishment includes U grade for uh, a particular course or one grade less for all the courses, or it can be very serious, uh, no, uh, ranging from debarring to uh, expulsion of the from the program. So be very careful. Uh, no, uh, uh, be honest, do not indulge in any academic malpractices. There are other non academic. Uh, Grisha, just to add, uh, the students may be thinking, what is this U grade? So basically, like uh, Aniruddin mentioned, there are letter, letter grades starting from S, A, B, C, D, and E. After that, there is U grade. U means uh, you, you have not passed the course, so you will have to repeat the course. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks for that. So, uh, so that was about the academic mal practices. Uh, in addition to that, you also have to uh, you know, understand and take care of other, certain other academic conduct. That is, uh, you know, uh, the following things are you know, uh, definitely uh, taken seriously at IIT Madras. Those are. These are non-academic misconducts, which includes rude behavior or impersonation on social media or cyber bullying or making program specific communication. You know, if it is, if it is very restricted to the program, you are making it public. So these are the kind of non-academic misconducts, which you will definitely have to avoid. The, there will be punishments for these kind of misconducts. Uh, you know, it can be probation with warning, it can be the you know, reduction in the marks, or it can be debarred from the uh, uh, you know, program or restricted from the program. So be very careful. Do not uh, involve in any of these misconducts. 
a little bit about the web etiquettes in all your communication so, please quick question on the previous slide ccc mm -hmm. is the credit clearing capacity is that right yes that is correct uh, credit clearing capacity of course is uh, you know uh, 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 not uh, relevant for the uh, uh, for the electronic uh, systems program, uh, but the, there will be reduction in the uh, credits. You know, if they are indulging in yes. some kind of uh, misconduct, or uh, it, uh, that is mainly about the uh, non-academic misconduct. There will be a limitation on the number uh, of quotas and so on. That number of so on. Correct. That's right. So moving on. Uh, you have to take care of certain things uh, when it comes to web etiquettes. Uh, in all your communication, please ensure that you treat others with the same respect that you would like to receive from others. Uh, be polite, uh, be courteous, and uh, you know, be kind to your fellow students. Even if they make some mistakes, uh, you can be polite and you can you know, take it offline instead of uh, you know, telling it in front of everyone. Or uh, and. Please avoid pointing out errors and mistakes made by others in the public forum. Uh, and if possible, uh, try to uh, handle it in a very different way. Uh, please, you, know, uh, uh, you can uh, take it offline and uh, you can mention about uh, any errors that has been done. And uh, understand and respect the diversity. As, you have, as I already mentioned, the learner group in the program is diverse. They come from different age. Uh, different background, different roles, uh, and uh, you know, different states, and so on. So please understand uh, the the diversity involved, and do not send any offensive or discriminatory message when it comes to the uh, their background and so on. Uh, all laws protecting the rights and dignity are applicable on the web as well. A little bit on the cyber bullying uh, again. Uh, what is cyberbullying? Any aggressive or intentional act that is carried out by an uh, individual using electronic form and uh, you know, and which is repeated and over time done. So this kind of cyberbullying again is uh, definitely taken very seriously at IIT Madras. Examples of cyberbullying include hacking, trolling, impersonation, spreading lies about the program or course or uh, or any individual. Or it can be cyberbullying also includes sending, sending abusive or you know, threatening or hurtful uh, messages or harassing someone. Such all these things have to be avoided. If we come to know that you are indulging in any of this, uh, it will lead to serious, uh, uh, serious consequences. Um, lastly, uh, this is a policy on the sexual harassment. Again, uh, ensure that uh, no, you uh, uh, you uh, you you understand the uh, this particular aspect. Um, uh, uh, any uh, any uh, behavior uh, which is related to sexual harassment uh, will be taken again seriously by uh, IT Madras, and uh, there will be a committee that will be set up, and uh, you will get into serious problem if you get into such uh, such uh, such incidents. Please do not uh, involve in that. And uh, examples of uh, sexual harassment include sending someone uh, uh, sexual content, including uh, images, emojis, uh, messages, or videos, or photos. Uh, so please do not uh, uh, involve in such, uh, uh, such uh, incidents. And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, this will be taken extremely seriously by the Institute. So uh, that's all uh, we have as part of the program. Uh, and uh, so we have received certain number of uh, questions from some of you. Uh, we will be taking uh, those questions and we'll try to answer some of the questions. And we see that most of the questions are already answered uh, in the presentation uh, done so far. Uh, however, we will be taking some questions and professors will be answering them. Uh, let me sh stop sharing the screen. So uh, the first question, Professor, is uh, related to the accommodation. Uh, some students are asking during the lab uh, session, we stay, we will have to stay at IIT Madras campus. Uh, do we get accommodation? So um, um, at this time, we have tried to schedule it uh, during summer break and winter break. Now <clears throat> we will uh, 
try our best to get you accommodation but if that is not possible we will we were we are also uh, you know we will also be talking to you know institutes in an you know in, around iit campus to try to get your accommodation so uh, at this point of time that is yeah. what we, uh, that is our plan right now and uh, of course you will be coming here for about a week one week to two weeks right during summer and winter so at this time uh, you know uh, during that time we will try our best to get you accommodation in or around iit campus but if you are not able to for some reason you will have to make arrangements for accommodation on your okay so the next question is related to uh, 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 related to the performance uh, this one student who is asking is it possible that top performers get a chance to stay iit matas uh, campus uh, i i don't think uh, that is a possibility unfortunately not at this time there is no provision like that yeah yes. okay. so the next question is uh, can i pursue this course as a full time course or uh, is it recommended to take up an offline degree this we have already answered maybe you can just add on to whatever i said yeah it is uh, designed as a full time program but in case if you are working or if you would like to study at a slower pace you can have less number of courses uh, every semester so as per our original design it's a full time course for full time program okay uh, again uh, there are a lot of questions about the lab work uh, how many times we will be coming to it madras for lab work i think that question is also already answered yeah. so i we want to that uh, yeah So I'll move to the next question. Uh, uh, okay, so there's uh, some students who are asking this question. That is, uh, would like to get your suggestion on which engineering branch should I choose if I take up this program as well? If they are doing another degree outside, uh, oh, okay. another degree outside. Okay. Yes, which branch they should. take so maybe we'll answer it like this um uh, this bs degree in electronic systems has probably maximum overlap with uh, what is traditionally called the electronics and communication engineering yeah. or eca degree so for example if you are registered for an eca degree in some college what you learned here will be helpful to you in your eca degree as well so from that point of view there will be maximum overlap there will be lesser overlap with a course such as uh, triple e electrical and, and electronics engineering there will again be a lot of overlap if you are doing an instrumentation uh, engineering uh, course so <clears throat> in these three there will be various degrees of overlap there will be very little overlap if you are doing other courses yeah now uh, so there may be this uh, bsc electronics correct so correct so these are probably the courses there is some overlap if you are looking at in that angle in that angle now if you are looking at a more of a long term angle maybe um, uh, if you are interested in um, specific fields of electronics applied to other areas maybe let's say biomedical instrumentation so maybe you want you want to learn the electronics as part of this and you want to you are doing a biomedical instrumentation maybe when you move for you know for your final project in your biomedical engineering course this might be the electronics part might be useful maybe you want to apply for graduate studies somewhere this might be the electronics that you learn from here might be useful in other areas so i can think of various areas biomedical engineering maybe if you are doing aerospace engineering maybe avionics might be you know if that is what you are interested in um, you know um, focusing on in aerospace obviously electronics will be very useful there there are various Uh, you know branches where this will be useful okay uh, the next question is uh, is something related to the content uh, will we be learning anything related to the computer hardware in this course there is another question from the same student is this degree suitable to doing further studies like msc okay so maybe the computer uh, hardware uh, i will answer so yes you will indeed be learning uh, aspects of computer hardware 
Maybe mm-hmm. starting from digital. Maybe digital starting from digital systems. Yeah. Right. Right. Starting from the second semester, there is a course on digital systems. You will start from there, and you will work your way up. There are courses related to microprocessors and microcontrollers. DSP. DSP. So there are various aspects which will lead you to learn. You know the hardware aspects of computer systems. And later, if they want, they can take uh, electives also. Electives. That is absolutely right. Okay. Uh, the next question. Yeah, the question was MSc related to MSc. Yes. Yeah. Can you repeat the question again? Is this degree suitable for pursuing higher studies like MSc? Yeah. In fact, we would suggest MS in uh, you know electrical engineering or electro electronics engineering. That would be a better uh, choice. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, is it compulsory to attend the lab work? Uh, uh, because uh, some of this, some of uh, students like me uh, are staying uh, very far away, so they're asking this question. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, uh, it is a compulsory. Yeah, some of the courses has this low lab component, and this is important for the program. And this is also a good opportunity to you know visit other part of India. And, you know, that's also a learning exercise. That is correct. So uh, I will also add this. in a traditional theory course you have these graded assignments and then you write these quizzes which are monthly tests and then you write the final exam in a hardware lab course there is no separate written exam uh, you know or if at all there may only be one written exam there may not be any other exams so uh, <clears throat> your final product in this course is really the uh, i guess you can think of it as a complicated circuit or system that you have built as part of the lab and uh, you need to demonstrate that in person to the faculty or the instructors which is why we ask you to come in person yeah i think once they do that they will feel like coming and demonstrating it <laughs> that is the last thing to do okay uh, the next question is related to placement will we get any placement uh, i just want to tell that uh, there is a separate placement team which will be working for this particular program uh, but this team is not the same team that is handling the btech program this is a separate dedicated team for the bs program where the team will be interacting with the industry experts industry people and uh, they uh, the team tries to uh, bring them here uh, for hiring students and also uh, and also for various other activities for example uh, workshops and so on and uh, the team also will help students in Uh, other uh, other aspects such as uh, soft skill training or uh, or uh, you know workshop on how to attend interviews and so on. So the team definitely will help in all these. Uh, Professor, you want to add on to this? Okay, so maybe I'll just add one point, which is mm-hmm. the apprenticeship, because that is uh, very important for your placement. So more and more companies, if you look at traditional, you know, BE or BTech programs. they have some let's say summer internship winter internship lot of students do this and lot of companies are preferring you know to uh, as a first choice to hire students who have done internship with them who have done well during the internship because uh, <clears throat> they are able to uh, see the students work very closely during that summer period so as part of this bs in electronic systems we have an apprenticeship in the fourth year where you can do spend time working you know with a mentor in a company it's like an internship but while you are doing other you know other courses as well quite possibly because this is an online uh, delivery program so as yes, part of this apprenticeship you will also get credit for you know as for the overall bs degree but you will get a chance to work closely with a team and that period is also flexible because we do have a you know a regular b or b tech student can only do this in summer or winter whereas we give some little bit more flexibility and uh, once you do this apprenticeship your placement becomes a little bit easier if you do well during that inter- uh, apprenticeship i just wanted to add that point there okay uh, so uh, next question um okay next question is related to the uh, fee waiver uh, yes uh, i have already explained this uh, do i have, do i get fee waiver uh, if the if the uh, if the family income uh, is uh, 
uh, less than 5 lakh yes you will get uh, the fee waiver the uh, based on the category and the family income uh, if you have ews uh, certificate uh, and if the family income is less than 5 lakh you will get a uh, 50% fee waiver you will also get uh, fee waiver uh, of 75% if the family income uh, if you have ews or SCST uh, certificate uh, or PWD uh, with uh, 40% and above disability and less than 1 lakh uh, family income, you will get 75% fever. These details we have provided in the website, you can just uh, check that. And uh, if you have any queries related to fee or fee waiver, you can definitely write to us. Another question is uh, how do I uh, and when do I pay the fees? Should I pay it uh, yearly or term wise? You will have to pay uh, as per the, uh, uh, there will be something called course registration. At that time, you will have to register for the courses and pay for the those courses. Uh, and uh, this is not yearly. This is as per the term. And, mm, and, and uh, you don't have to pay the entire fee uh, yearly or, uh, or the entire program fee at once. It depends on the, uh, uh, depends on the number of courses that you take uh, in a particular term. Okay. So, uh, so most of the questions were related to these things that we uh, already answered. Uh, maybe we can just take one more question uh, and then we can uh, end this session. So, is the syllabus of uh, BS in electronic systems same as uh, BTEC in electronics? or electronics uh, or EC? So there is some overlap, but it is not the same. As uh, you know, we said right at the beginning, uh, Professor Bobby pointed out that this is a very, uh, this is a program that is going to give you very focused industry skills, job related skills. And he also pointed out that every electronic system has hardware and software. And we are teaching that as part of this course. There are a lot of courses in this program that you will not find in any traditional BE or BTEC. Uh, at the same time, there are some courses in an electronics and communication engineering, especially related to communications, for example, and signal processing, that we do not teach as part of this program. So, for example, uh, uh, a typical course would be digital communication or analog communication. Sometimes it's called telecommunication. Those are all courses that do not form part of the core curriculum of this program. Eventually, many of these courses will be given as electives. So one of the things, uh, maybe I should explain what core means and what elective means in this, because many of you may not know. Uh, <clears throat> the required courses that you have to do to get your degree are what are called core courses. So every student who goes out with a BS degree in electronic systems from IIT Madras will be doing a certain set of courses. Those are called the core courses. At the same time, we also want to give some flexibility. Some students may want to do, let us say, specialize in the fourth year. You may want to do, uh, a dip, you know, maybe you might want to specialize in software in electronic systems. You might want to specialize in IoT. You might want to specialize in, I specialize in instrumentation maybe biomedical instrumentation. You may want to specialize in IC design and so on. So we want to give some flexibility, some pathway for students to do more focused, more specific courses in those areas. Not every student may want to do that. So those are called electives. So you can elect to do them. And uh, we offer options also, you know, we have something called free electives also, where you might want to do more number of, let us say, mathematics courses, or maybe you might want to do a course which is, you know, purely programming courses or which are not directly related to, you know, electronic systems as well. You may want to do humanities courses. Humanities refers to, you know, courses such as language, uh, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> more uh, courses that are not core engineering. Maybe courses in what are called liberal arts. Uh, you know, and so on. Maybe but history, management related. management related courses would also come under, you know, that category. You can do in, you know, this free elective category can cover any one of these areas. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, one or two important questions. I think I, I, I know that I told the last question, but let's take 
one uh, important question. Uh, so this is mostly uh, you know, this I am seeing through the in the YouTube uh, comments that we are getting. My documents is not yet verified. Uh, so what to do? So uh, uh, that if you have already completed, if you have submitted the documents, the document uh, it will show as verification pending. Documentation document verification pending. The status will be updated in your login once the document gets approved. So do not worry, uh, just wait for another one or two days, uh, the document verification will happen. And uh, please note that if you are not submitting the JE relevant document, uh, you will be moved to the re regular entry. So please ensure that you submit the right document, JE document, so that uh, you will get direct admission to the program. So that is one question. And the next question that I wanted to uh, answer is related, related to the exam city. Uh, can I change the exam city? Uh, yes, you can change. We will provide option uh, for you to change the exam city. Uh, we will uh, give you an option uh, where you can enter the city of your choice. And then uh, uh, based on the exam cities that we have, and you can select that and you'll be able to take the exam. So, uh, so these were the questions that I wanted to take. Uh, uh, so, thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, that's all uh, I had. Maybe just one point. See, uh, we have recorded uh, the lectures of a uh, couple of weeks, and some of those are available already in the website. So, just to get a feel about it, you know, it may be a good idea to watch. Uh, Girish, maybe you can tell where that is available. You, yeah, if the, you want to find out, I think it's not very straightforward. Uh, the the we, first, YouTube videos, week yeah, of, yeah. Of video. yeah, correct, correct. So uh, all of you can actually watch the videos. Uh, if you go to our website uh, under academics, uh, there is a foundation level, diploma level, and degree level. And uh, uh, under foundation level, you can see the courses. The courses are mentioned there. And for example, if you go to uh, electronic systems thinking and circuits. Uh, you can click there uh, on the right hand side, there's a small arrow button. You can click that and you can see the uh, uh, course structure. Uh, and we have also provided the link of the videos. Week one videos are provided in that. Please go through the week, uh, week one videos. And uh, since the term is starting in September, you don't have to wait till uh, to watch those videos. Please watch them. It will be provided on YouTube and uh, through uh, uh, through website. You can go through that uh, YouTube videos and you can be prepared for the September term. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for uh, taking this uh, orientation session. We will also have another orientation session tomorrow for the qualifier process. Those who have applied. Uh, and the non je entry mode that is regular entry mode we will be having another uh, uh, session uh, where we'll also be talking mainly uh, we'll also be talking about the qualifier process uh, and the qualifier week will start from this week that is from this friday it's going to start and we'll be talking more about that uh, in the tomorrow session uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, thank you professors uh, and uh, we'll catch you soon on the next session Great. So we want to welcome all of you as uh, students of IIT Madras. So welcome to your journey with IIT. Yes. Welcome to the family of uh, the electronic system. Thank you, Professor.